Welcome to Digital Electronics Lecture Series. I, Professor Ritesh Dholakia, is going to explain you successive approximation type ADC in this video. And to understand successive approximation type ADC, these are my session outlines, where in this video, first I'll be going to discuss basics of successive approximation type ADC. After that, I'll explain you structure of successive approximation type ADC. And based on its structure, we will see working of successive approximation type ADC. And to understand its working, I'll explain you conversion tree and conversion time of successive approximation type ADC. And at last, we will see advantages which is there with successive approximation type ADC. So let us begin this video with first agenda that is basics of successive approximation type ADC. Now see when we talk about successive approximation type ADC, then this ADC is having better conversion time compared to counter type ADC and tracking type ADC. In my previous video, I have already discussed counter type ADC and tracking type ADC in that we have already seen conversion time period that was depending on input analog voltage and rate of input analog voltage. But with successive approximation type ADC, our conversion time period does not depend on input analog voltage and rate of input analog voltage. Right, so that is one basic advantage which is there with successive approximation type ADC as well as one more major advantage that is there with successive approximation type ADC is its conversion time period is lesser than counter type ADC and tracking type ADC. So let us see how conversion time period does not depend on input analog voltage and how it is better compared to counter type ADC and tracking type ADC. So let us see the structure of successive approximation type ADC. So here we have input analog voltage and that input analog voltage that we give it to comparator and input analog voltage that we connect it with positive terminal of comparator. Negative terminal of comparator that we connect with output of digital to analog converter and digital to analog converter generates VDAC output with respect to reference voltage. At last I'll show you the basic formula of conversion of digital data into analog and even we are a little bit to see what will be input to this DAC. See output of comparator that will be given to successive approximation resistor and that is what control signal which we give it to successive approximation resistor and how output of successive approximation resistor is controlled by comparator that I'll show you later one. So, with respect to clock, successive approximation resistor will generate digital data that will be input to DAC and that is what we are dealing with to latch at output side as a digital data. So how we generate digital data, how that conversion is happening, let us try to understand that by practical example and as I have told you this VDAC that is depending on this V reference voltage, right and that will be V reference into A1 by 2 plus A2 by 4 plus A3 by 8 plus A4 by 16, here I have considered 4 bit successive approximation resistor and as per that VDAC voltage will be this A1, A2, A3, A4 that is based on digital data that can be 1 or 0 with respect to digital data provided by successive approximation resistor. Here we are connecting sample and hold circuit why the reason is input analog voltage may change with respect to time and for accurate conversion of input analog voltage we need to hold that input voltage for some time period and for that we are connecting sample and hold circuit over here. So this sample and hold circuit will hold analog voltage for conversion time period and that analog voltage that we will be translating into digital at output side. So let us try to understand how that conversion is happening. So as I have told you this is my circuit where initially successive approximation resistor is having data that is having MSB is equals to 1. This is what 4 bit output which is there with successive approximation type resistor. Initially MSB is equals to 1 and all other bits are 0. Right. And based on that VDAC will generate voltage and that voltage that will be V reference into A1 by 2 plus A2 by 4 plus A3 by 8 plus A4 by 16. Right. And here analog input and VDAC that we are a little bit to compare at comparator and based on comparator signal next data of successive approximation resistor will be there. You see if in next clock 
if v in is greater than v d a c, then successive approximation register that will hold that one, and next bit that will be one over here. But in next clock, if v in is less than v d a c, then in successive approximation register that bit that will be making it to zero, and next bit that will be making it to one, and that process that will be a continuing. based on number of bits here we have four bits so we will be repeating this process four times right so how we repeat that process let us try to understand that by one practical example so here vdac that is we reference into a1 by 2 plus a2 by 4 plus a3 by 8 plus a4 by 16 and let us consider v in is equals to 10.2 voltage and we reference that is 16 voltage initially MSB is equals to one, right? So you see, MSB is equals to one, and other bits are zero. And as per that, VDAC voltage, that is eight voltage. If you place V reference is equals to sixteen, and one triple zero with A one, A two, A three, A four, it will be making it to eight voltage. So in next clock, we are little bit to compare V in and VDAC. If V in is less than VDAC, I have told this bit that we need to set it to One and this bit that we need to make it to zero, right? And if VDAC that is lesser than V in, in that case we need to make this bit as one and we need to hold that one over here. But here you see VDAC is eight voltage and V in is ten point two, so V in is greater than VDAC, so this condition is false. So we need to convert from this successive approximation type resistors data. Now see in next clock there are again two possibilities. If V in is less than V D A C, then we will be making this bit is equals to zero and this bit is equals to one, right? But if V in is greater than V D A C, then we will be making this bit is equals to one and we will hold this previous data. But here you see V D A C is twelve voltage, V in is ten point two, so V D A C is greater than V in, so this position is false position. right so we will be moving on to this now from here again there are two possibilities if v in is less than vdac then this bit will be 1 and this bit will be 0 if v in is equal v in is greater than vdac then this bit will be 1 and we will be holding that previous one over here but you see this vdac is 10 and v in is 10.2 so v in is greater than vdac so we can say this condition is false condition and we'll be holding this condition now see in fourth clock we will just comparing this last data bit right and there are again two possibilities if v in is less than vdac then this bit will be zero and if v in is greater than vdac then this bit will stay one right but you see vdac is 11 voltage v in is 10.2 so this condition that is false right so this is what our translated digital data at output side that is 1010 and vdac equivalent voltage that is 10 voltage for that right so after four clocks you will be finding we are having digital data and resolution of this successive approximation type adc is four bits so it needs four clocks to have digital output data let us see the conversion tree So VDAC voltage is equals to V reference into this, and if V in is greater than VDAC, we are showing it by this blue color. If V in is less than VDAC, we are showing it this by orange color. And this is my conversion tree. So as per four clocks, you'll be finding digital data that will get generated after fourth clock, right? As resolution is four bits. Now let us try to understand this by time duration graph so here conversion time duration graph that i am going to show you and same example v in is equals to 10.2 voltage and v reference is equals to 16 voltage and vdac is equals to v reference into this right on y axis we are having voltage which is having range from 0 to 16 and on x axis we have time and here we are having four clocks here we give first clock second clock third clock and fourth clock input voltage that is 10.2 voltage you can see that by this color by red color initially msb is equals to 1 so you see 
VDAC that will be 8 voltage as per 1 triple zero. And as I have told you, if V in is greater than VDAC, right, in that case we need to make this bit is equals to 1, right, and previous bit that we need to keep as it is. So you see 1100 0, that will be our next data and as per that VDAC will be 12 voltage. You just place that in this formula. And now you see VDAC is greater than V in and as VDAC is greater than V in, in next clock, this bit that we need to make it to 0 and this bit is equals to 1. So you see now it will be 1010 0, 0. and as per 1010, 0, 0, VDAC voltage is 10 voltage. Now you see VDAC is less than V in. So in next clock, next data will be 1011 and that will make this voltage to 11 voltage and as VDAC is greater than V in, in last clock, last bit that we need to make it to 0, right. So after fourth clock, our digital output data that is 1010. So this is our successive approximation type ADC is translating our digital data, right and after fourth lock we have digital output. Now if you observe conversion time period here, so that is constant it is independent on input so conversion time period here, that is number of clock into t clock right. So if you observe this successive approximation type ADC then you will be finding conversion time period here is constant it does not depends on input signal it provides very high accuracy it provides lower power consumption it is easy to use and it is having low latency time, right. So that's why this successive approximation type ADC that is very useful in the market and it is taking number of bits into T clock time period to have one conversion of analog sample into digital data. So this is all about successive approximation type ADC. I hope that you have understood this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do give your valuable suggestions. The reason is your suggestions matters to me. And based on that in future I will make videos which will be solving queries of students. Thank you so much for watching this video.